Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to do a little experiment, and that is whether or not we can use a torch around an open fuel tank, specifically a petrol gasoline tank. And the reason I want to do this is because I'm well aware that there are a lot of people out there that do do this, and they say there's no issue. And at the same time, there are lots of people saying that they would never do this and it's dangerous. Because of course, there's a worry that the torch will ignite the fuel. So this is my little experiment that I've conducted. I will say now it's not perfect, but in my opinion, it does stand as some evidence and the result might surprise you. So let's get going. Okay, so first of all, I need to emphasize this. From start to finish on this video, I'm taking necessary fire precautions. I'm standing behind a protective screen, wearing protective equipment, and I have a third party present with with a fire extinguisher. So I've got to say, please do not try this at home. Okay, to begin with, and to emphasize my point, I'll need a see-through vessel. So I'm gonna use a fireproof glass and the one from this candle should do just fine. And I'll need to remove the wax candle itself. So I'll place it in a bowl with some water I've just boiled, leaving the boiling water in contact with the outside of the glass for a few minutes, thus melting the thin layer of wax touching the glass. This then allows the candle to slide out of the glass nicely. And after a good wipe with the rag, we've got a nice clean fire resistant glass. And now I'm pouring some fresh gasoline fuel in here. And with all safety fire precautions met, I will then add a flame just to show a little proof that it is gasoline I'm using and its flammability within this glass. And one thing to note while we're here watching this flame is that it's not the liquid at the bottom actually on fire. The fire itself is actually above the liquid. And this is because the combustible part of gasoline are the vapors, which are tiny particles of the fuel itself evaporating upwards. And so moving upwards out of the liquid means that these particles can now mix with the oxygen in the air. And it's this mix of gasoline vapor and oxygen that can result in combustion. In this situation, take away either one of the two and the flames will stop. So now I'm gonna take away the oxygen by blocking off the air with this steel dish and the flames go out. So if it wasn't for the fact that gasoline needs oxygen so much, the flames would still exist inside the jar, even with this lid on top blocking the air. And it's evident where the heat and flames were just by looking at the color of the glass. They weren't at the bottom near the liquid, they were above. So with that little lesson over of how gasoline combusts in this little glass jar, let's now clean it ready for the actual test. And this is the torch I'll be using for the test. It was quite a cheap one. It was only about three pounds from our local store. And this one is an LED type. And so as we can see there, it's in perfect working order. And so because we know now how the gasoline will react if it does catch fire, in our particular jar that is. We know it's not just gonna blow up as a result of the torch being introduced into this glass. Instead, it's more likely to act more like this. Having said that, we won't know until we've tried it, which is why we've taken all necessary precautions. So please, again, I want you to know that I don't recommend you do this. And of course you don't need to because I'm doing it here and you can watch it in the safety of your own home. Okay, so here's a glass of freshly poured gasoline fuel. And so from behind our protective shield, I've got the torch attached to a long pole and I'm now going to dangle it into the gasoline. And although LED torches do run fairly cool, I've had the torch on for the last five minutes to warm it up. Now I'm showing this part of the clip in slow motion, but what I'm trying to do is hover it round where the vapors are, because as we know, it's the vapors that are the combustible part of the fuel. But at the same time, I'm dipping it in here as well and getting some fuel on the torch and moving it round and lifting it back up into the vapors and basically making sure that it's got enough exposure to the gasoline. And at one point, I even submerged the torch. Although, as we now know, it's far less likely to combust being submerged inside the fluid like this than it is hanging around the vapors. After around three or four minutes of this, I decided that I was gonna submerge it for longer. So I took it into my fire pit, put it on a box, filled some fresh gasoline, put in the torch and left it there for 10 minutes. And when I came back, nothing of course had happened, but I was impressed to see that the torch was still alight. And from what I can actually see, the solvent effect from the fuel had no effect, no damaging effect whatsoever on this torch. But I didn't want to leave it there. After that experiment, I wanted to see just how stable this liquid gasoline fuel was. So I got this Bunsen burner and heated up this rod. And again, I'm showing this in slow motion, but I then put the hot end of this rod into the gasoline itself, through the vapors and into the fluid. And the fluid even quenched and cooled it, cooled it right down. 
but there was no explosion, there was no combustion. So really it's difficult now to say that the reason the torch didn't combust this fuel is because we used an LED torch and LED torches operate at much cooler temperatures because putting this in here when it was glowing red and it still cooled it and never combusted kind of proves the point that if we were to use a conventional torch that runs much hotter then it may well be that the outcome of this would be the same as what we've seen and if it wasn't for the fact that it's LED torches that are mainly used nowadays and that I couldn't actually find any conventional torches for sale in any of the stores around my area then I would have actually tested a conventional torch as well and just in case you're wondering if this really is gasoline fuel then in comes the flame Okay, so I think I've seen enough and I'm confident enough now to try the torch on the fuel tank of one of my own chainsaws. And I used this saw two days ago, so there's still some fresh fuel down there in the tank. And for the last five minutes, I've had the LED torch in the on position warming up and now I'm going to introduce it to the tank. This particular torch is actually too thick to fit inside the tank, but as it's the vapours that rise upwards and outwards out of the liquid fuel that's combustible, then the torch will most certainly be in contact with those. And so I'll leave this torch here now for a further five minutes. And when I come to remove it, all is well. And just in case I was starving the fuel tank of oxygen, I just dangle it over a little bit more like this. Just to make sure it won't combust those vapours emitting out there. So from this little experiment we've done here, which is far from perfect I know, it does seem to be the presence of a naked flame that's the dominant factor of whether the fuel vapours will combust or not. I'm not saying this in all cases, so it's always best to be precautious, and I myself will always be cautious of using a torch around fuel, especially a fuel tank, because I'm fully aware that the shape of this jar is not the same as the shape of a fuel tank. Because whereas the shape of this jar, where the combustible vapours will just rise up and out into the environment, the shape of this fuel tank is much different in that it's more of a box shape. And so inside, the vapours might not be able to escape so quickly. And so there may be a build-up of vapours. So a higher concentration that might combust more readily and violently. And so whilst I'm not advising to use a torch anywhere near gasoline fuel, after looking at this little experiment, which again isn't perfect, I am personally less likely to think that looking into a fuel tank with a LED torch will result in a fire. But whether you do so is down to you to decide. And if you decide that you're going to, then please do your research before doing and be confident in your choice before you do so. And so at that, I want to thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here are some more of my videos that might help you along the way. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.